All right, guys, welcome back to another Data Mine. Today is a UR ship day. We've got a lot to go through. Not only the five new event ships, but two retrofits, five augment modules, and a lot of event stuff, including the new Yamato gun. I'm not going to go over the whole patch notes, though. Most of that information was covered in the stream. And if you don't know about it, I spent a lot of time putting together this seven minute video recapping it all. Real briefly though, we are adding a new triple core data campaign and there will be double experience for commanders under level 80. Otherwise, let's get into the new IJN event, Violet Tempest Blooming Lycoris. Lore wise, we get introduced to Jinsu Meta. I wonder when she'll become an obtainable character. Map wise, you should probably be grinding D3, which drops Wakatsuki and Izumo's gun, the prototype triple 410 millimeter gun. The shop has a whole bunch of goodies, including Wakatsuki, Yamato's gun, the triple 460 millimeter gun, which is a new gun which we will talk about later in this video, cognitive chips and arrays, season 5 DR and PR prints, augment module stones, and the usual resources. So with that all out of the way, let's get right into the ships. We're going to start off right with Musashi. All right, looking at her stats, holy crap is she on a whole nother level. She's the first ship to have a base 11,000 health. She is also heavy armor. She has the highest firepower in the game above UVH and New Jersey by quite a bit. Her main gun efficiency is higher than New Jersey's and so is her auxiliary gun's efficiency. Where she's lacking compared to New Jersey, she has lower anti-air, she has lower anti-air efficiency, both which makes sense in the context of history, and she has a lower reload. So she will fire later unless there's a skill that changes that. Overall, looking at stats alone, I think she's the most powerful battleship in the game. However, New Jersey and UVH have really good skills, so if she doesn't match those, she might not be the best ship. Skill number one, she has a 100% chance to proc a special barrage when she fires her main gun. If her main gun is an IJN main gun, you enhance that barrage. Looking at the enhanced barrage when she has an IJN main gun, it is actually more powerful than a New Jersey barrage in terms of damage. Given the power of this barrage, you probably want to equip her with a Japanese gun. This is a little awkward since most of the best battleship guns are not Japanese. However, we are getting the Yamato gun, so that could fix this. That being said, if the Yamato gun has the same stats as the leaked version from a year ago, that might be a problem, but we'll get to that later in this video. At the very least, you can use the Izumo gun that drops at D3. This special barrage has a 50% chance to crit, which sounds good, but New Jersey has a 100% chance to crit. Also, the thunder from this barrage in inflicts a special armor break. This can stack with other armor breaks. It can apply to any type of ship with any type of armor, and that ship receives 5% more damage for eight seconds. If that ship is heavy armor though, it will take 10% extra damage instead. This is the best armor break in the game. New Jersey had the best one. This one surpasses that. So really this barrage has more damage. It has a better armor break. It has less chance of critting, and it restricts you to an IJN main gun. Overall, on par with the similar New Jersey skill. Let's move on to skill number two. She gets plus 20% firepower, which sounds great on top of the ship with the highest base firepower in the game. Keep in mind if you sortie the New Jersey with another US ship, she'll have 25% increase in firepower. Musashi also gets a plus 5% hit stat. That's a nice bonus. Never going to argue against that. If she's using an IJN equipment, she gets plus 10 reload. So that matches what New Jersey had. Although Musashi has a slower reload base stat than New Jersey so she's still going to fire later. This requirement is not as bad. It doesn't require it to be the main gun. Although if you are using the IJN main gun for skill number one, that will also just work for this one. Also, her main gun crit damage goes up by plus 15% when you have the IJN equipment. That's really nice considering this skill also gives the hit stat. Once again, this skill feels very on par with the similar skill from New Jersey. Let's move on to the last skill here, and I can see this is a wall of text. If Musashi is not the flagship, already preparing her for having Yamato coming, I guess, or you have air parity or higher, I guess she needs some air defenses as well. Seems relevant. So if either of those happen, she has self damage resistance plus 30%. Holy crap, she's going to be probably one of the most tanky ships in the game. 11k health, heavy armor, 30% damage reduction. Massive. All you got to do is not put her in the flagship. Easy. 
All right, that alone makes this skill really good. Let's see what the rest of it has. If her health is above 40%, your other main fleet ships receive a flutter defense status. This means they are no longer affected by end screen damage. This includes planes that fly off the screen or in PVP suicide boats. So this just prevents crash damage. That's awesome in PVP. If any of the main fleet ships that have flutter defense are revealed, Musashi will be revealed as well. If Musashi or anyone else is revealed, everybody will be revealed. But now Musashi will be the target of all enemy attacks. This will act as a taunt, increasing the chances that the enemy will fire towards her. It doesn't take the damage of the other ships away from them, but it does take the aim away from them. This, once again, also seems really relevant to history. I like this skill too. And I just read a really sad part. All related effects to the flutter defense don't apply to PvP. And that stinks. That makes a lot of sense. This would be stupid busted. You just say negate crash damage, Aquila you die, and then also we're going to redirect all of your damage into this 11k body with heavy armor and a 30% damage reduction. That would have been stupid good, but apparently none of the flutter defense activates in PvP. So this is PvE only. Honestly, there's very little content in PvE where I'm concerned about her dying. So maybe future content, this is going to be set up for that. Very powerful. Kind of disappointing it's not in PvP, but it makes sense. This would have been like a must play if that was the case. She also has... The last thing that every UR gotcha ship has, and that is a cross fleet. If she's alive in the fleet, the other fleet will get a cross fleet barrage at 15 seconds and 35 seconds. So that's two barrages. That's fine. This skill is actually very good. Instead of New Jersey's 5% damage reduction, she gets 30% damage reduction. And while the other two skills are PVE only, the flutter defense is really interesting if you have to deal with suicide boats, or a very high aviation enemy map. I would say in short that she's at a very similar level to New Jersey, possibly power creeping her a little bit and becoming the best ship in the game. I think overall her stats are better, her skills are about on par, a little bit better in certain situations. I think there are only two concerns I have with her right now. One being she really needs an IJN main gun, and two, her reload stat is pretty low. That makes her slow. Otherwise, I think it's possible that this ship is the best ship in the game, especially in PvE. You still might be using New Jersey in PvP in certain instances because her support skills actually apply in PvP. But I think as most people expected, Musashi is a must pick up. I would probably recommend spending all the cubes it takes to get her. Now with the big banner ship out of the way, let's take a look at the other ships you'll probably get on your way to getting Musashi. Musashi. We'll start off with the relatively free ship, Wakatsuki. She is an SR destroyer, and stat-wise she looks like a slight improvement over her sister Suzutsuki. The same HP, same evasion, same speed, but higher accuracy, higher firepower, higher torpedo, and she gets her main gun plus one, which was something that made Suzutsuki very good on release. Their efficiencies also match, so stat-wise she's just a better Suzutsuki. Skill number one, every 10 seconds she fires this slash barrage. She gets 5% firepower and 5% aviation boost. The barrage that has slashes ignores shields, and this stacks three times. So at 30 seconds, she'll have a 15% firepower and anti-air boost. Also, the damage she deals against an enemy that was hit by the slashes is increased by 10%. This seems very good against bigger enemies that are going to stick around for a while. There's no limit to how long that debuff applies. Also, she takes 10% less damage related to firepower or torpedo stats from the enemy that was hit by those slashes. Once again, no limit. Once they're hit by the slashes, they are forever marked. This skill's very good, actually, on top of a very good stat ship. Skill number two, her anti-submarine warfare is increased by 15%. She also obtains an extra special anti-submarine weapon. I assume that's like a main gun plus one, but for submarine warfare weapons. If she's sorted with a sister ship, her evasion is also increased by plus 15%. So like Suzutsuki just gets her more EHP. She also procs a sonar scan every 15 seconds that reveals enemy subs for 8 seconds. That's really good. It's guaranteed. It's going to be awesome in like World 14 and anything that requires you to deal with subs. Wow, she became an anti-submarine warfare ship real quick. Her anti-sub stat is even higher than Suzutsuki too. If a Vanguard ship's HP drops below 30%, so that should include herself as well, it gains 
perfect evasion for two seconds. So this means it's kind of like invincible, except that it can still die to things like crash damage. And on top of this perfect evasion, a shield will also be generated that blocks 6% of Wakatsuki's max HP. This skill procs once per battle. So this is a little bit more complicated than just a smoke screen and a heal like Suzutsuki, but it's actually a pretty good way of increasing your survivability of your Vanguard. Overall, Wakatsuki is actually a very good ship. She's most definitely going to be overshadowed by Musashi because Musashi is amazing, but Wakatsuki is actually a really nice pickup and she's going to be available in the shop. So she's basically guaranteed if you play the event. So definitely pick her up. She looks very good too. Can't have enough of these main gun plus one destroyers. The last SR of the event is the light cruiser Sakawa Noshiro's sister. Stat wise, they look pretty comparable. However, Sakawa notably has higher torpedo stat and higher hit stat. So that's exciting. Let's get into the skills. Skill number one, she gives herself plus 20% torpedo stat. Interesting because Noshiro gives the whole Vanguard that boost, but let's keep going. When receiving damage in an instance larger than 5% of her max HP, so it's gotta be like one shot, she's gonna generate a shield that blocks 10% of her max HP. And that lasts until the end of the battle. So that shield does not go away. It's like 10% extra health, basically, unless the damage is in a form that goes through the shield. This procs once per battle. If the shield is broken and it stays around the whole battle, remember, her evasion goes up by plus 15% and her damage that she deals goes up by plus 15%. And that lasts until the end of the battle. That's really good and actually very different from Noshiro. Let's move on to skill number two. She only has two. Her torpedo damage resistance is plus 20%. Once again, this is the same thing as Noshiro, but Noshiro gives it to the whole Vanguard instead of just herself. Also, at the start of battle and every 20 seconds after, one of three things is going to happen. If her HP is less than 25%, she heals 10% of her HP. That procs once per battle. That can happen at the very beginning of the battle. So if you come into a battle after mob fleeting and you're low on health, she just heals immediately. But she can't heal again for that battle. Battle. If her HP is above 25%, she gets plus 15% crit rate for 15 seconds and procs a barrage. That's nice. And that has no restriction on the number of times it can proc in a battle, just every 20 seconds. Also during these markers, if she has destroyed at least three ships, she also gets damage resistance by plus 20% for 15 seconds. Overall, Sakawa feels like a solo version of Noshiro. Noshiro is mostly used to buff your whole Vanguard. Sakawa doesn't really do that. Instead, she's given some more buffs that allow her to heal and get extra stats and do some fun stuff. So like 1v1, Sakawa is stronger. However, people were using Noshiro to boost up their torpedo vanguards. Sakawa doesn't do the same thing. So they're actually very different niches that they fill, but Sakawa is also a very strong ship. So far, all three ships have been very good. Now we have two ships left. Both of them are elites, so I have less hopes for them, but let's take a look at them. We'll start off with the elite heavy cruiser Haguro. Stat wise is not that exciting. She is a torpedo heavy cruiser that's never great her dps contributing stats like torpedo and firepower are pretty low her hp is actually not bad but she has a long way to go to see any relevant play outside of waifu of her meta so let's look at her skills skill number one her damage against destroyers and light cruisers is plus 15 percent meh also she has a 75 percent chance to proc a special barrage every 15 seconds if it fails she heals for three percent that's kind of interesting so she has a 25 percent chance to heal three percent every 15 seconds seconds. That's not terrible, actually. Skill number two, if her equipped torpedoes hit an enemy, her evasion stat goes up by plus 10% for 10 seconds. I don't believe there's any way to have this proc twice in 10 seconds, at least at this point in time. So yeah, this doesn't seem very good. I mean, 10% evasion, I guess, is good for a heavy cruiser, but eh. Also, if vanguards have taken 10 damage instances, which is kind of interesting, so it doesn't matter how much damage it was, it just has to be a damage instance. Her luck is decreased by five? Oh yeah, this is what this ship needed. Balance. All Vanguard ships have their damage resistance go up by plus 10% until the end of the battle. That's actually pretty good. Basically, you just take 10 damage instances across your whole Vanguard, and then everybody gets 10% damage reduction for the rest of the battle. Okay, maybe this did need to be balanced. No, I mean, this is actually a really good skill, though. I'm surprised. This is better than I thought for an elite torpedo heavy cruiser. I'm still not going to use her, though, but this last skill is very interesting. Finally, 
let's move on to the final event ship, the Elite Destroyer Miyuki. She comes as an accumulation reward. Stat-wise, she is very fragile and definitely focused on torpedo-based damage. So let's look at skill number one. When the Vanguard collides with an enemy, damage received by your Vanguard is reduced by 25%. Oh my gosh, Hawk 20 has another glow worm. That's so funny. Vanguard's firepower hit stat go up by plus 10% for 10 seconds as well when this happens. So now you get a boost to your stats when you're ramming. This is so for Hawk. It's just built for him. This effect does not stack, but it does refresh the duration when you do it again and again and again. Also at the start of the battle and every 10 seconds after, she and the Vanguard take six damage? Okay, she's hurting herself? I mean, six damage is nothing. I mean, her health pool is actually really low, but six damage is still nothing. And in return, all the ships receive plus 10% evasion for three seconds. That's actually really exciting because you can do that to the whole Vanguard. So you can give like Anchorage plus 10% evasion by taking six damage off of her. This is actually really interesting. I like this skill a lot. It's very exciting. Hawk better use this ship in his Glowworm fleet. I'm just saying like everyone just has to ping him all right skill number two emergency maneuvers what a troll skill every 20 seconds 30 percent chance to evade all attacks for six seconds so basically a skill that makes her have a chance at going invincible this ship is so troll i like it though honestly i liked all five all five had very interesting skills were pretty good at what they did i didn't think there was a single ship in this five that was a disappointment honestly musashi not having her skill in pvp kind of sucked but honestly i still think she's one of the strong if not the strongest ship in the game right now. Crazy event. But we're not done yet. We have two retrofits and five augments to go. So let's start with the retrofits so we can finish off the ships. And I want to talk about Juno because I have sacrificed her so many times. I have to see what her retrofit does. I'm going to immediately retrofit her as soon as the server comes live. Okay, like most retrofits, she gets a pretty good boost to her stat. Holy crap. She gets a main gun plus one. She gets a main gun plus one. <laughs> Since when did Juno need a main gun plus one? Free extra damage. Let's go. I didn't even know what the skill does. I'm so excited about this main gun plus one. Okay, then. All right, let's go on to the skill. We're updating the martyr skill. Oh gosh, I'm excited to read this. Okay, 70% chance to proc when receiving damage. So anytime she takes damage, that's her whole goal is to take damage. She's the sacrifice. So this is perfect. She procs a barrage, more damage on top of that main gun plus one. And she heals everybody by 1%. Okay, that's really cool. I mean, 1% is very low. There's an 18% cooldown on that, which is actually actually pretty long for PvP. Oh, and beyond this, her skill switches depending on if it's PvE or PvP. Interesting. They know where people use Juno. All right, so in regular PvE, she gets her standard heal when she dies on top of her barrage and heal that was added. In PvP, when she would receive the fatal damage, she doesn't sink. This is basically a free Manju item. And she heals the whole fleet by 25%. Oh my gosh. And because she's not sunk, she heals herself. So that's an extra 25%. This can proc only once per battle, which makes sense. And it proceeds before anything else, including like the Manju item. So if you put a Manju item on her, she would basically have like three lives. She would sink and then fail to sink and then it would heal her back up and then she would sink and then the Manju would protect her and then she would finally sink the third time. And I think the Pearl Tears would only only activate on that final sync after the Manju if you had a Pearl Tears and a Manju. Wow, that's a lot of Juno deaths. You could literally get like three Juno deaths in a single PvP battle. That is super exciting. That is super good. And actually really interesting came out with this update because I feel like some people would be considering, oh, do I go with New Jersey or do I go with Musashi for PvP? Because Musashi is more powerful in general, but New Jersey might be better in PvP. And now it's like, oh, Juno is like, I am back as the martyr. I love this retrofit. Wow, this event is just being great to me. I'm very excited. I've been happy with pretty much everything. This should be really fun. All right, let's go to Shropshire. Maybe Nick Lasso will come back for his retrofit of Shropshire. On top of her stat boost, she will also get a little bit of changes to her gear. In her auxiliary slot where she normally equips the torpedoes, she can now equip a destroyer gun instead. You get to choose. As far as skill-wise, her changed one is the artillery command. Increases firepower of your vanguard by 15% 
percent and does not stack with any other artillery commands. Okay, this one's kind of lame. I'll give it that one. But it's Shropshire. What do we expect? She's just gonna ruin our polls, come up when we don't want her. She's the OG green hair. But a retrofit doesn't make her that good. All right, time to move on to the augment modules. These are like mini retrofits. We got five of them. And then we still have the Yamato gun to go. Oh my gosh, this update has so many things in it. All right, of the ships to get an exclusive SR module in this update, we'll talk about Illustrious first. It gives her 35 aviation and 22 hit stat. That's very good. It also gives an augment effect of if air control is not incapable or denied, meaning it's air parity or better, the first airstrike gives Vanguard's plus 5% damage resistance for 50 seconds. So that's just a really special skill to her that makes the Vanguard live even more than they were before. Also, she has an improved armor carrier skill. So when she launches an airstrike, she will also launch a special barrage on top of the barrier she gives them. Also, the barrier she already gave them, if it's broken, those ships will heal 3% of its max HP. Okay, so she actually gets a barrage to help with the DPS. She gets some extra stats. She gets a heal now. And she gives some extra damage resistance for your Vanguard. All very nice. Unfortunately, this does nothing to protect your Vanguard early on. She doesn't have a preloaded, and even her damage resistance only applies after her first airstrike. This isn't going to make her great, but it certainly makes her a little bit better. Next, let's talk about HMS Vampire's Augment Module. It gives her 160 HP and 25 firepower. Her Augment effect will give her a slash. This is basically just the generic slash. It's nothing special like Illustrious. And it improves her Vampire's Kiss skill. Now when she launches her torpedoes that heal herself 20% of the damage she inflicts, like a vampire, get it? She also heals the other ships in your vanguard by 8% of the damage inflicted. So she heals 20%, they heal 8%. And only of the damage inflicted. And only of the torps. And this doesn't even boost her torp stat. This augment module is not very good. Obviously it's better than nothing, so I'd probably put it on vampire anyway, but it does not do a lot to fix her problems, and she has many. Little disappointed by that. Next up, we have Ayanami's Augment Module. It gives 32 torpedo stat, 18 hit stat. Those are the ones we want. Her Augment Effect gives her 10% torpedo weapon crit rate. That's awesome, so she's gonna crit a lot more. And she upgrades her Demon Skill. Now she gets plus 10% torpedo damage, just straight boost. On top of that, at the start of the battle, she increases her torpedo stat by 100%. She literally doubles her torpedo stat for 8 seconds. And and of course she has a preloaded. So her first set of preloaded torpedoes are going to have double torpedo stat and then a 10% boost of torpedo damage and a 10% boost of chance of crit rate too. On top of that, after that eight seconds is up, she gets damage resistance by 8% for the rest of the battle. Holy crap, this one did not disappoint. Ainami is back to useful. Wow, those in the church of Ainami must be really excited about this. Moving on, let's talk about Karlsruhe. It gives 30 firepower and 25 hit stat. Those are good stats. It once again just performs the basic slash attack. Nothing special. And we are upgrading full firepower. Oh boy. And it just approx an additional barrage. This is the lamest specific augment module I have seen. Why not just use a generic? I don't know. This is not very good. It certainly feels like it's a waste of augment stuff. Sorry to people who like Karlsruhe. All right, let's end it off with Montpellier. She gets 32 firepower and 20 hit stat. That's nice. She gets a generic slash attack. Oh no, the other two that had generic slash attacks were very boring. Let's see if this one isn't. She is increasing her anti-air mode. That's interesting. So anti-air mode, as you might know, when firing anti-air guns, 25% chance to increase your anti-air by 40% and you decrease your own firepower by 20% for three seconds. Now the upgraded version that she gets after this is if she's using a US equipment, her firepower is no longer reduced, so you just get the anti-air buff. And now the anti-air buff is 80% instead of 40%. That's pretty good. Also, at the start of battle, damage resistance is plus 15%, and every 20 seconds has a 25% chance to increase her damage for 25% for 8 seconds. I'm honestly a little bit surprised they turned an anti-air mode plus into actually something useful. This is actually a really good upgrade for her. Nothing along the lines of Ainami. Ainami is definitely the winner, hands down, of all the 
five augment modules, but Montpellier and Illustrious got pretty decent ones. Sorry if you're a Karlsruhe or a vampire fan. All right, we are done with all the ships, but we still have one thing left, and that is the new equipment, the Yamato gun. Of course, this was leaked about a year ago. We'll see if they changed anything from that leak. So I'm looking at it, and I don't see any changes from what I remember. 216 damage times three shells is huge. It's also AP ammo with some massive armor modifiers. 135 modifier against heavy armor versus like a 125 on the 457 Georgia gun. This thing hits hard. Now keep in mind though, that fire rate is over 30 seconds. That is so slow. This is one of the slowest guns, if not the slowest gun in the game, which can really hurt with your timing. You can't put this on every ship. It's actually kind of a bummer because Musashi really needs this gun to get her boosted barrage. But if you put this gun on Musashi without any help, I'm not sure that she's going to be able to fire within like Vanguard or any of the other boosting battleships, which is kind of awkward. I'm looking at this and I'm like, it really should go on Ulrich von Houten or maybe a Vittorio Veneto with the 80% reduction potentially like a French ship with a preloaded but I don't even know if I would want to use this on Musashi which is what it's supposed to be for I don't know you'd have to use like some high performance gear or the UR special one and maybe even a reloader and that would feel so awkward because you'd have to give up a shell I don't know this gun is really good don't get me wrong definitely pick it up like don't miss this but it's not like put it on anything you have to really make sure the timing works out for this one it's just so much slower than everything else like it's going to be fire after a standard carrier is going to launch the airstrike, which kind of makes sense if you think about it, but dang, that's slow. It does hit really hard. It probably overkills a lot of things too, which is interesting. I wouldn't use this in PvP unless you have something that makes you fire early. But yeah, definitely pick this up. This is going to give you the most damage, the most raw damage. It's just going to come out a little bit slower. So depending on what you're doing, that might not matter. So just make sure you have your timing right. Every map and every usage in the game might be a little bit different. Sorry, that wasn't very helpful but definitely pick it up all right that's it we got through all of it overall this event looks really fun we got something to grind in d3 we got a ur ship that is freaking busted dude and then we got two srs both exciting we got two elites that are unique and interesting even though they're not great we got augment modules ainami is getting huge buff two of the other ones are getting decent buffs and we got a bb gun that's going to be relevant in certain situations honestly i don't know what else to ask for this seems like a pretty perfect event just got to hope that my rolls do pretty well i have the pity for Musashi, but now I kind of want to sweep the banner really bad. Anyway, guys, I wish you the best of luck in your polls. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this type of content, you know what to do. I will probably try to stream this event sometime over the weekend. Take care, and until next time, thanks for watching.